The Great American Grain Robbery is brought to you by NFO Public Information. Five wheat states want an investigation. According to wheat growers, farm organizations, and state commissioner of agriculture, who attended Oklahoma Governor David Hall's five-state wheat workshop in Oklahoma City. The states were Nebraska, Kansas, Colorado, Texas, and Oklahoma. The delegates also urged the Justice Department to accelerate action for grand jury investigation of former federal employees working for private companies. NFO News Analyst Phil Allen has the story. At Oklahoma City, October 14th, an important meeting was called by Governor David Hall of Oklahoma to consider what to do about the wheat scandal, which had affected Southwest wheat growers. Helping sponsor the meeting were agriculture commissioners from three states, John White of Texas, Glenn Cruiser of Nebraska, and Billy Ray Gowdy of Oklahoma. There were also in attendance key men from wheat grower associations and farm groups. Here's what John White said. He's agriculture commissioner for Texas. You don't have to be a mental giant to know that the early producers and early sellers of wheat in the United States in the summer of 1972 have been taken for millions and millions of dollars. If this is the legal way to do it, then the law ought to be changed. And I happen to believe that the law can be changed when people demand it, and they demand it in the right and responsible way. Walter Otte of the Colorado Wheat Growers Association tells how the wheat scandal affected growers in his state. We suspect there was a collusion between the former agriculture department officials and the grain trade. We feel the agriculture department is overstaffed with people from the grain trade, and we feel the department should be staffed with people from the producer level. The Rusty Colorado wheat farmers lost several million dollars due to the Russian wheat sale. David Hall, governor of the state of Oklahoma. And I know that most of you are just as disappointed as I am that the secretary of agriculture would not be here and has not yet responded to our request to visit with this workshop and share his knowledge with all of the wheat farmers and other interested parties here today. The manner in which the Russian sales were handled has already cost Oklahoma farmers $44 million, including the possible loss of the final payment. While grain companies face many problems, such as non-payment for storage and demurrage and other related expenses, they have asked the Treasury Department to defer one half of their taxes from the Russian wheat sale profit. We believe this should be explained. Here are the observations of Don Crane of the Kansas Wheat Growers Association. I'd like to add a little something here, and it may not be relative to what's taking place today, but I think it is. It always enters my mind when things like what have happened, what's happened, has happened, is a little statement I heard the chief economist in the Department of Agriculture make to a seminar of his own economists I think, Walter Ida, you were there. In fact, uh, maybe all of you fellows were there that day in 1970. When the statement was made, we need no more than 550,000 to 600,000 commercial farmers in the United States. We're going to make this ta transition as quickly and as painless as possible. And that thing sticks in my craw like a burr. And any time something like this happens, I can't help but think of that statement made that day. The man who made that statement was Don Paulberg. Earhart Fingston, special assistant to the president of the National Farmers Organization. In my opinion, the first steps necessary to get facts out to farmers is to clean out the high command of the Department of Agriculture. <laughs> because President Nixon could heed this advice and do it, and put people in charge who know that farmers and not agribusiness are the department's number one clientele. Also at the Oklahoma City Conference was Graham Purcell, chairman of the Subcommittee on Livestock and Grain of the House Agriculture Committee. 
In winding up the conference, he replied to a number of questions from delegates about what steps would be taken next. Congressman Purcell said that there will be further hearings in Washington and with subpoena power. Wheat farmers are angry and want an investigation. This was apparent at the five-state wheat meeting held at Oklahoma City October 14th, called by Governor David Hall of Oklahoma and three state commissioners of agriculture. They met to discuss the wheat scandal. In attendance were Wheat Growers Association representatives and spokesmen for nationwide farm organizations. Here is Governor Hall's definition of the purpose of the conference. And I know that most of you are just as disappointed as I am that the Secretary of Agriculture would not be here and has not yet responded to our request to visit with this workshop and share his knowledge with all of the wheat farmers and other interested parties here today. The manner in which the Russian sales were handled has already cost Oklahoma farmers $44 million, including the possible loss of the final payment. This group can get the attention of the U.S. Department of Agriculture and the administration officials. I believe in a way that no other group in America can today. John White, Agriculture Commissioner for the state of Texas, outlines three steps he feels should be taken. I would recommend for consideration at least three things in our discussions. One, some course of remedial action to reimburse those who had losses that occurred because they didn't make a misjudgment. They didn't gamble and lose. They didn't have all the information that was available at their disposal to decide whether they wanted to sell or not to sell. And that's the right of every producer. Secondly, I would think that it's about time that we had a law on ethics concerning departmental agricultural officials similar to that of the Defense Department, so we could stop this revolving door of corporate people running in and out of the department and exchanging jobs. And thirdly, I hope that we would support Senator Lloyd Benson and his call for a grand jury investigation. Graham Purcell of Texas is chairman of the Livestock and Grain Subcommittee of the House Agriculture Committee. The congressman replies to questions at the close of the Oklahoma City meeting. It's true that the uh, government official uh, as Palm Bay uh, cannot go to work for a, a similarly related uh, organization as he did for one year? Well, the law now provides that a person who leaves the government and goes to work for a private enterprise, that that person, that company could be dealing, but that person is prohibited for one year of involving himself in a transaction between the government and that company. Then you get into the argument, uh, did he really do it? And the way apparently it's been worked up until now is that they're stationed some person in the office next door to the former uh, government official. And that government official talks to that government employee, then that other employee goes to talk to the foreigners or the USDA or whoever it is. This is a camouflage but this is apparently what's been going on. In fact, I don't think that has even been enforced, but the law must be strengthened. That's what I mean when I say we've got to have stronger ethical, ethic laws, uh, stronger moral laws, or whatever you want to call them, but this must be corrected. Thank you. Yes, sir. Congressman, when you use the subpoena power that you have in your committee, the next time you go at this? We will, yes, sir. No question about it, because we did not get the kind of cooperation we have to have, didn't learn the things we have to know, uh, short of using subpoena power, so we will use it in whatever way we think is appropriate. Uh, and the answer to the whether we'll use it or not is a, a definite yes. We have presented key portions of the discussion at the Oklahoma City Conference on the Wheat Scandal. The meeting was called by Governor David Hall of Oklahoma and co-sponsored by Agriculture Commissioners of three states where wheat producers had lost millions of dollars that they should have realized from the sale of wheat if the USDA had not deceived them.
One of the questions about this presidential election is, how will rural America vote? The fact that increasing numbers of rural people are remembering and thinking about the voting records of Nixon and McGovern explains why there is now an unmistakable trend towards Senator McGovern. Let's review the key points of the most recent farm policy decisions. In 1970, President Nixon opposed the Coalition Farm Bill recommended by over 23 farm organizations. He recommended abandonment of the parity concept in the 1970 Farm Act, proposed abolishing the USDA in his State of the Union Address in 1971, lifted all import quotas on beef in 1972, and restricted export of American cattle hides in 1972. Meanwhile, Senator McGovern's farm record is becoming better known to rural America. In 1965, McGovern sponsored the Wheat Certificate Act, which prevented a collapse in the price of wheat. He sponsored the Farm Parity Resolution of 1966, which prevented a government freeze on low farm prices. McGovern sponsored the Family Farm Act of 1972, which would stop the spread of big non-family farm corporations. This is a comparison of the key portions of the farm records of Nixon and McGovern. Perhaps the real test is on the parity question. Nixon has been against it, McGovern has always been for it. Recently we visited with Mr. Vincent Rossiter, president of the Bank of Hardington, Nebraska, on the meaning of parity to the farm community that his bank serves. We asked him what would happen if 90% parity were restored. If Senator McGovern is elected President of the United States this year and restores 90% of parity to farm prices, he will increase gross farm income by $56 billion cash. This can be achieved without producing one more bushel of grain, without producing one more pound of beef, without plowing up one more acre of ground, because we have the production. The whole matter will rest on whether or not we receive a price at parity with the average cost of all other goods and services in the United States. And Senator McGovern has promised us this if he's elected to the presidency. What do we need, uh, Vince, in new resources to accomplish this? The most valuable thing about the 56 billion of added income in agriculture is that it would be achieved by restoring the price level of a commodity that is essential in everyday living. It would be a matter of reflating the farm prices to a parity level, a level that is equal to the other sectors of the economy. And if we do this, it would require no additional investment in resources. Because we have our farms, we have the buildings, we have the facilities and the equipment, they're all there. It would require no addition to our labor force because our farmers and their families are in place on the farms and doing the job. It would require no increase in production because we have adequate production now at the present time and the capability of increasing that production if need be. All we need, all we need to achieve this is a parity price. What are the chances that farmers can get 90 percent? It is my considered opinion and honest judgment after years of observing uh, agricultural prices at a depressed level in relation to the cost of other goods and services that we will never receive parity in agriculture again unless we elect a president of the United States who is fully conversant with the problem and the solution. And unless this president is fully committed when he goes into office. And this is exactly what George McGovern is promising the American people. That was Vincent Rossiter, president of the Bank of Hardington, Nebraska. Today we compared the Nixon and McGovern farm voting records, and that for today is something to think about. The Great American Grain Robbery was brought to you by NFO Public Information, from the Home Office in Corning, Iowa, the Farm Bargaining Center of the World.